Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys. Wherever you are on this beautiful world, whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel. For the newcomers, my name is Didi. Today, not walking and talking on the beach in Phuket, but today I'm walking and talking on the beach in Lagos, Portugal. Again, I will be here for a couple of days before we go skiing. Beautiful in the snow, in the mountains. But today, guys, five amazing Bitcoin charts, a trading tip, some travel tips, of course, and live advice, of course, answering one of the questions. And yes, I have two cool news items and one news item will make you laugh out loud now let's quickly jump into the charts first to show you exactly what is happening into bitcoin and yes after that i will give you the trading tip how to handle that chart bam the first chart for today guys is of course this four hour chart now check this beautiful chart you can see in which range that we are now at the moment with the bitcoin price so we have this bottom area over here around 52 we have the top bluish area over there at 70k like if we zoom in a little bit more maybe it becomes a little bit more realistic because there's a lot of volume areas in between so for example over here there's a lot of volume and support around that 72 level if we would fall we would grab the liquidity over here at 68k levels maybe even at 67k levels and if we break that area guys then we can even fall to 62k area but still i would stay bullish because for me a bull market always has some dips just check this dip over here we went to this top of 69 we fell all the way down till there 15 percent if we would do the same from the top over here now let's see there 15 percent bam, 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 we would come all the way back 15 percent to this level over there and that's 62,000 us dollar level so that would be almost the same wick that we experienced over here nothing strange all part of the bull market you will go higher if you're investing today there will be a doubling of your capital in the next one half to two years and if not then then probably after that in the next bull market play the long-term game don't use bitcoin just for the short-term gains but play the long-term game now let's quickly jump into some more interesting charts this is the first one the bitcoin realized profit versus the mean plus one standard deviation we can see these green areas on the bottom that's the realized profit as you can see over there and we have the blue line that's the mean plus one sd now every time during the bull market we can see these green peaks these are the runs and of course also the dips is then that white area after it now the moment we come above that blue line that is the second huge part of the bull market that's the steepest part that is like when we see the blow off top here we saw the same bear market over there and then we had a run of course a little bit touching that blue line coming above it here fully going above it with full volume last part of the bull market again here almost touching it now where are we at the moment we are here we are just crossing that blue line this is just the beginning look it's now two orange lines over there created this is what we will see in the future a whole area of orange lines here again a whole area of orange lines so we are just in the beginning of the bull market yes it might seem like a very steep climb but that was also over here a steep climb and that was also over there a steep climb and it was also here in between from the bear market that run to 14k a steep climb nothing strange this is how bitcoin moves only the numbers look bigger now because we are talking about a shitload of liquidity the second chart I want to talk about is Bitcoin long and short term holder supply cycles. Uh, we can see this uh, orange area, that's a short term holder supply cycle, and the bluish is a long term holder supply cycle. Now, so what we see is during the peaks, the long term holders are taking their profits. They are selling their Bitcoins, loading off their Bitcoins. The short term holders are accumulating during the cycle all the way up to the peak even same time every again long term they start to sell during the peak dollar cost everything out short term is buying during the peak the short term volume that is also always creating those huge crashes of 70 percent because this is bought mostly by retail investors that are buying the peak now this time could play out a little bit different because there's a lot of people that are buying for the longer term in my honest opinion so will they dump as well the spot ETFs that's what we don't know yet I believe that there will be moments that people will start to take profit but if we look at the charts 
We are just beginning. Look how small this blue area is. Look how small this orange area is. This was the previous bull market. This was the previous bull market. This was the bull market before that. This is nothing. This is just the start. The realized cap hollow waves also very interesting to see. You can see how big the volume is that is held by one to three months or one week to a month or one day to one week or 24 hour. Um, the more people will hold 24 hour, that is when we really will see that the top is in. You can see that here during these peaks, a shitload of people just buy the top and then decide to sell it again, you know. So that's always during the bull market tops when that 24 hour goes up. Now, when that one day to one week goes up, when that one week to one month, all of those uh, realized cap hollow waves will go up during the bull market run. During the bull market run. Again, look where we are. We are not even near that 40% level that we always pass in that bull market. We didn't even pass that 40% level. The bull market will historically always peak above 60%, above this area over there. If this area of these reddish colors will go to those areas, believe me, the price will be way higher than that 80k or 100k. Very important to understand. I'm showing you all these charts just to share with you that we are just getting started. We are not even near the bull market top. Another chart that is showing you this, the on-chain confluence. Look how during the bull market this confluence comes above that 20 level over there. Here, bear market goes down below that. Bull market comes above it again. Bear market goes down below it again. Here, that was that COVID crash. Here, we went up above it again. This was the latest bear market. Now, we are just getting started. Look at that area, how big it is. Look at this area, how big it is. Look here, how big it is. This is just the beginning. Another chart telling us this is just the beginning. Now I have two more very interesting charts for you guys. Here, this one. This chart is very interesting, guys, because look on the bottom. When we broke the previous autumn high, this is the 2012 bull market. When we broke the $17, it took 30 days to double to $34. After breaking the previous autumn high, it took 30 days to double up to 34 dollars here this is the 2013-14 market we had a 155 dollar peak when we broke that peak it took 12 days to double to 510 then we have the 2014-2017 bull market 1200 was the peak when we broke the 1200 us dollar it took 91 days to double to 2300 us dollar that's almost three months now 20k was the peak when we broke that 20k in this latest bull market in 2020-21, it took only 23 days to double to 39,000 US dollar. At the moment, guys, we broke the previous all-time high. We broke that 70k level. How many days would it now take to double from 70k to 140k? Will it take 23 days? Will it take 90 days, 12 days, 30 days? The days don't really matter to me. What matters is that every and each cycle that we had before in Bitcoin, after breaking the previous all the high, we minimally doubled during that last part of the bull market. We doubled every time. So why wouldn't we be doubling now from 70k to 140k? If you have the answer, leave the comment down below. Last chart for the day is this one, the Bitcoin cycle peak to cycle peak. This is the previous peak, the previous all-time high. We are now above that peak. We did it before the halving. We did it before the halving. We are massively outperforming those other two cycles. Normally, we would have said, hey, this will end up different. This white cycle would again go a little bit lower than the red and the blue cycle and probably end up something like there, you know, 130k. That is what we normally would have said. But at the moment, we can deny that we already are outperforming the previous cycles before the halving trading autumn high. Could it now mean 
that we are going to outperform also these, this, these lines after the halving. Could that mean we would end up somewhere at 500k? Or could that mean that we would be in between these cycles, somewhere there at 280k or 300k? Or are we just peaking a little bit too early and, you know, and then go underperform again and come somewhere around there? You know, 135 to 50 or 150k. All these possibilities are there on the chart. But the thing that you need to realize is that it has never happened before that after the halving, we went down. We can't see one moment in time that after the halving, we did this. That is not going to happen. We will go up somewhere between these areas. Amazing chart, guys. I hope you really enjoyed those charts, guys. Yes, always zooming out in Bitcoin. And of course, that short-term volatility is there. If you want to be a trader, join the Bitcoin Family Signals Group or the Bitcoin Family VIPs, where we talk about trading every day again and again and again but guys for me it is a bigger play it is a four-year cycle the top will be in 2025 we are pre-running the normal cycle we created an autumn high before the halving which makes me even more bullish but also we are going very steeply up there will be corrections along the way and all those corrections are just part of the game and you just need to buy that dip don't cry but buy is what we say. Now, let's quickly jump into the trading tip now. The trading tip for today, guys, is not really a trading tip, but it has to do with trading. Because Thailand, the country I just left, opened now all the spot ETF trades on the US markets for their Thai people. So the Thai SEC, so like not Gary Gensler, but then the Thai version of Gary Gensler, now I proof that Thai people can also trade the spot ETF market in the United States. So that's shitloads of liquidity now being added from Thailand. And Thailand is a rich country. It's a kingdom with a lot of huge companies and a lot of rich people that now also will start to trade that Bitcoin spot ETF. So the trading tip for today essentially is keep an eye on all those volumes combined. All the spot ETFs worldwide, all the institutional investors, countries, companies and retail investors buying bitcoin as long they keep buying there won't be massive dips like 40 percent or 50 percent because there is just too much demand and the supply is just not enough so the trading tip for the day is keep an eye on all the liquidity that's flowing into the market daily the moment we see a decline in new liquidity into the market that is when you know we will get to a short-term top or maybe even to the bull market top so always keep an eye on all that liquidity and all those volume in all those parts of the industry. Trading tip for today. The travel tip, guys, is uh, that I am now in uh, Lagos again. And the travel tip is the water in Thailand is around like 30 degrees, sometimes 22, 23. I think the water here now in Lagos is like really cold let me feel ay, ay, ay. this is like uh, 16 15 16 degrees so it's a big difference between the seas here in portugal and thailand guys uh, the travel tip for the day is if you travel make sure your hand luggage is not a big mess i did that i made that mistake this time i just threw because it was all last minute all my stuff in the hand luggage like bracelets and all my stuff and cables and stuff and then i came at the check-in and they were like hey bro this is a huge mess. We need to check your whole suitcase. So they took all the parts out, everything in different boxes, the boxes again through the scan, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So make sure that your head luggage is not a mess as like mine was today. Maybe I can add a picture over here as you can see exactly what kind of mess I had in my hand luggage. I had these golden looking Bitcoin coins in it and bracelets and all that stuff. So they were like, what is this? So make sure you have a very neat hand luggage because because else it will take you an extra time. Oh, second travel tip for the day. I had an overstay in Thailand. I was staying 21 days longer than my visa allowed. They don't make a big issue of it as long as you pay. You pay 500 baht per day. So I needed to pay 10,000 baht for that overstay, which is around $270. But I just did my calculations, else I would have needed to be flying out of Thailand to, for example, Kuala Lumpur and back and a hotel, which, which would also have cost like 250 euros. So for me, it was like, hmm, let's just take the overstay. It is not the best thing to do because if they catch you 
during the overstay, you won't be able to come into Thailand again for a year or something. So it wasn't not the smartest thing to do, but I took a risk. Like always, I take some risk. That were the travel tips for today. Turning around, I know the sun might be shining a little bit bright, but I'm not going to walk too far because I just did like a 16 hour flight and a three hour taxi ride. I'm still recording a video, so we'll keep it short. But the news for the day is that Biden, President Biden, you know that man that walks on stage all the sides and can't speak and forgets who he is and all that stuff. But that guy proposed now 30% tax on electricity that is used in the United States for mining bitcoins. So when you use electricity to mine bitcoins, you need to pay tax. Now my question is to Mr. Biden, I will speak very slowly because I know you are a little bit older and maybe else you won't understand me, Mr. Biden. But what for those people that mine Bitcoin in a green way? Using wind or using water or using solar power? So they don't use normal electricity from the grid. They use free electricity to mine Bitcoin. Why would they need to pay 30% tax? And my second question, Mr. Biden, is... So what about all those banks with their ATMs and their bank offices full with air conditioners to keep their employees warm, full with computers, fuel, full with server, uh, server rooms, etc. Et what about those? Don't they need to pay 30% tax on electricity as well? Because the bank uses a shitload of electricity? The whole banking system that needs to support your US dollar all those buildings, all those air conditionings, all those offices, all those lights, all those computers, all those servers, all those ATMs, it uses way more electricity than Bitcoin mining. So please also impose 30% tax on the whole banking system to keep the dollar alive. We all know the dollar is dying, but I know, Mr. Biden, why you are doing this, because you really don't like that Bitcoin gets more power because you want to have a central bank's digital currency so you can control the US people a little bit more. I don't think you will be succeeding, Mr. Biden. I don't even think you will be winning the next elections. So all those proposals that you're making now, you will never see them happening, in my honest opinion. You know, the biggest of the biggest of the biggest companies in the United States are embracing Bitcoin. And Mr. Biden, you should as well. Just like you embraced that plastic card that you use now every day to pay at stores or to withdraw money out of the machine. Because you are still from that time, Mr. Biden, that you need to go into the bank to sign a note and then get your money. And I know for sure you were, all, you were also afraid of those plastic cards and that digital money by then. And now you are just afraid of the digital gold of the 21st century because that is overtaking the physical gold plus the US dollar. That was the news for the day. Mr. Biden really is a sad story. While walking home, I realized I forgot to answer the question of one of the followers. So I'm going to do the question of the follower. The question was, Didi, don't you think that this market is climbing way too fast in this bull market? Don't you think it's very dangerous what is happening? I agree. If you look at that pump that we are seeing, that's even steeper than the run that we saw in 2021 during the top of the bull market, then I agree. Yes, that looks really scary. That's like a climb that we haven't seen before. But all of that, of course, is because of the huge amount of volume coming from the spot ETFs and other markets. So yes, it is a real demand. So it's not like fake volume that is being created, it's real volume real hardcore volume being created by all the spot ETFs and retail investors and banks and governments. So I think it's very important that you understand that, that it is real volume. It's not like fake. So it looks scary, but because it's real volume, I don't think it's scary. It could mean though, that if people are too big in profit, so when they buy at 40K and they double their capital all the way to 80K in two months, that some of those people might think, hey, wow, this can't be true. I need to start taking profits. And on those moments, the emotions of those people will take a role. And those emotions will tell them to take profits. And that is exactly what I think that could happen. If we grow too fast, there will be people taking profits. There will be people thinking, hey, this is going too fast. This can be a bubble. Let's take some profits. And because they take profits at that moment, we get dips. And then we are there and you are there to buy those dips. 
because dips are for buying and not for crying. The bull market top normally is around 16 to 17 months after the halving, which would bring us to the summer in 2025. So I don't believe that we will see a bull market top in this year, 2024. Of course, yes, we already broke the all-time high, even before the halving, and that's really a little bit early, but it doesn't mean that the bull market will be over because of that. We can keep climbing as long as there is new volume. And there is shit loads of volume in the world, in the market, that still can be added. We are just getting started, also just getting started with the spot ETFs. There is nothing, if you compare it to the gold market, to the stock market, to the real estate market, there is trillions of dollars that can still flow into Bitcoin. So yes, I do believe it's a very steep climb, it's very scary, but it's a real volume, it's not fake volume, so that doesn't really matter in my honest opinion. Sometimes you have huge climbs, and yes, a 10 or 20% dip can always be there, that's a healthy retrace, and again, that's the dip that you should be buying. Not crying, but buying. That's the answer to the question. And the last part of the video, while I'm walking past Bam Bam Beach, Bam Bam Beach is there, it's open every day, also during the winter. There is beach beds, there is coffee, not like in the late afternoon, but in the morning when the sun is shining, you can still come here. I will be probably here tomorrow as well, guys. And the inspirational quote for today is, yes, jobs can fill your pockets, but adventures can fill your soul. And that is exactly what Bam Bam Beach was to me an adventure that filled my soul, an adventure that was there on my bucket list. I did it, I had my youth dream, a beach bar, I ran it very successful, I met a shitload of beautiful people because of that, and a shitload of beautiful people met each other because of that, and are now still having contact all over the world. A group of those people came even to Thailand, and we had parties there as well, all because of that one Bam Bam Beach that I started here on the beach in Lagos, Portugal. So yes, of course you can be working your ass off and filling your pockets doing so. But make sure you fill your soul equally. And you can only do that by running after your dreams, by running after adventure, not running the hamster wheel. Do what you love. When you start doing what you love, that is the moment when you start to fill your soul. And filling your soul is 10 times more important than filling your pockets. Believe me, I have seen the richest and the richest of the richest people, the most famous people in the world, hang themselves because money didn't make them happy at the end. It is not all about money. It is about filling your soul. And your soul will be filled when you grab life by the balls, when you say yes to adventure, when you say yes to new things, when you say yes to crossing off all those items on your bucket list. That is when you fill your soul. And that will bring you 10,000 times more happiness than filling your pockets for a job that you really don't want to do. That was everything for today, guys. Yes, a little bit shorter than normal, but I just came from a very long flight, so forgive me. Thank you for watching. I hope you really enjoyed the information. If you did enjoy the information, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. What do you think about the charts? What do you think about the tips? What do you think about the news? Do you agree with me or not? And yes, of course, share this channel with one of your friends today, please. I want to reach 75K followers before Bitcoin reaches 75K. US dollar and Bitcoin is already at 72. We are not at 70k followers yet. Just please share the channel with all the people that you know. Thanks for watching. I wish you an amazing day and see you tomorrow again. Bam.